Welcome back. 2023 NXL World Cup, the biggest and best tournament on planet Earth. About to take the field and throw down here the top four teams in the world, Tampa Bay Damage, Houston Heat, Dynasty, and the Tauntauns are going to be playing here for the first time in this big tournament. Yeah, they did play the exhibition, but as the big tournament has started. So these top four teams are going to get a bye into the top eight, but they got to stay fresh, got to get looks at this field, because whoever comes out of the top 20 is going to be some Lions, because it's tough out there in, the, in those four divisions. You have to be top two. So I'm Matty Marshall. I got Joe Barrett and Thomas Taylor here from LA Infamous, who look pretty good here at this event. Uh, sitting with a three and one record with a leave a plus seven. You guys are looking yeah. pretty good. Two and one. Sorry, two and one. Two yep. and one. Plus seven. So one more to go. Jumping into point number one here. Houston Heat, Tampa Bay damage. Heat starting from the blue side. Going to be losing Chad George off the break. They double up that back center and Tampa Bay damage. Keeping five bodies alive. Taking a little bit of ground outside wide. D1. Their D1 did take a hard bounce. He had to stop and actually look at it. Uh, but apparently he's clean. Houston Heat going to launch. Uh, looks like Mishka going to get up to the tower. Tyler Harmon thinking about trying to get out from that back center. I know he does not like to stay in that spot. Rainey stands are going to improve his position. Konstantin Fedorov takes a walk. So just three bodies out there right now for Houston Heat with Chad George and Fedorov taking the early walk. Tyler does make that clean fill. Great move. Smith's going to launch to get up to the 50-yard line here for Houston Heat. But somebody on Houston Heat needs to clock in, win a gunfight here to try to claw back on this body count. I'm also wondering, uh, Thomas, what do you think? How much are we actually going to see strategy uh, tactics wise out of this top four here in these? I mean, if they're not exhibition it is for seeding, but and you want to stay fresh and know what you're doing out there. But I'm just wondering, are we going to see much out of this? I'm going to show I don't us know We're going to get a lot. I mean, last last year when we did this, one of the games was one 15 minute point. Neither team really did anything. So, you know, yes, I know they need their reps, but last year it wasn't really exciting. So hopefully they play well. Keith losing a gunfight over here to Tyler Harmon. No, no, sorry, to Ryan Smith. He tried to rap on Tyler Harmon. Ryan Smith out of the 50 shoots him, but gives away his position. Rainey knows where he's at now, so yeah. look for Rainey just to go get him clean. Yeah, so Rainey's going to come through, trade out with Ryan. That's the correct move in that situation. It's going to pull it to a three on two, as and then using that diversion in the chaos. Uh, yeah, Jacob Damage. feels from the uh, Dorito can all the way to the God Bunker. Yeah, I had to do a second head check over there. Was that Jacob over yeah, here he on the did. snake side? He went from the Dorito can all the way around, passed up his brother, got inside here, looking over here. Hey, but he now in a good position, two on three. Ryan, Ryan Smith took two with him. Yeah, that's what they, they needed somebody to step up and, and do some work, and he Absolutely. won that gunfight and then forced a trade. So Mishka slipping out to the Dorito two. That's a great spot to be down on bodies. So uh, he not in bad, a bad spot considering they were down right off the break, yeah. three on five. Tyler's going to have a little bit of issue here, though, because if he even looks away and Jacob gets out, that's going to be kind of the game on snake side. He's got to really commit and stay disciplined to keeping Jacob out of that snake. Well, Joe, if you were Tyler, would you be looking to try to get out or up, or would you try to chill at that can and hope you can catch Jacob trying to make a move, knowing they have that extra body and he might want to try to move up? That's a tough one. You don't want to be a pinch. It'd be nice to be fully wide, but you know as soon as you go, he's just going to match you, and then you can't even see each other in the snake. The 50's in the way, so you can't really tell your other guy what he's looking to be cautious of. It's difficult. It's almost like it's better off just playing this one-on-one -on -one and see if you can land a shot on him. Jacob's been looking just mostly completely towards that D side here. Uh, he's now going to head check in front of him. Jason gets over with them. Yeah, Maddie, we all found that this layout is such a shooter's layout. I mean, of course, the sides are strong if you get out there, especially on scene. But really, these guys are going to take their time and not really rush to anything while they have the advantage because it's easy to get shot in all of these bumps. Yeah, we yeah, have seen. Oh, sorry. Go no, it's all good. We've, we've, but to, to your point, and Thomas, you can tell me what you think, but I've seen a decent amount of high body situations squandered out here. I mean, we're only in day two of the prelims, so we're going to see more of them. Especially when people like get into those key cross up bunkers, right? Yeah. Um, you know, Tyler, I don't know how he's living. I mean, he is in a bad way. Well, look how he has to load right now. I mean, he's mm -hmm. tucked in as much as he can. He can't even get a gunfight established to try to, you know, get a little breathing room to load. Yeah, Jacob is on this bounce shot pretty hard. Oh, Mishka takes a ball from Jason in the center. And that puts Tyler in a bad one on three. Yep, and this is the guy you want in that situation, but damage are also elite gunfighters, so that's a, you know, 2% chance of pulling it out. Right. Yeah, we've seen Tyler pull off some one on threes over here, but it just it doesn't really happen to damage very often because mm -hmm. they, they love to smother you. They don't make those bad mistakes. And that's why they're sitting where they are. I mean, two wins in a row. The past two events are Tampa Bay, sitting at second overall. 
Uh, so definitely looking for them to go deep again. They took second place at this event last year. Dynasty looking as we're going to see them play here against the Tauntauns. Dynasty has won this tournament, this World Cup, three times in a row. So looking to try to four-peat out here. They took the two wins in the beginning of the year. They're still sitting overall at first place. Uh, but it is making the overall series with the way the point systems work at, at Cup interesting because uh, damage could steal the series. I think Dynasty has to take like fifth in damage wins or fourth. It's right around there. Um, then damage could win, and that could happen. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Like those double points are a game changer. Yeah. So right now, Tauntaun's here winning the series championship in two events overseas as they are going to sweet spot out Alex Frazier. But a big bite on the D side for Chris Shear. Marcelo Margot out right behind him off the break. Also wondering if Dynasty, Dynasty ran two full lines in the exhibition. Didn't really deviate too much from that. I was wondering if when we come to this that we're going to see the same two lines. So Sheer, I love the fact he took the, the three to three off the break and he went right forward. But you got to take advantage of what you took. Like all that risk for no reward. That's a hard one to stomach. Well, and he, that's a, he doesn't die like that very often. That's he's true. A, he's really good at staying alive. I've watched a lot of tape on Shearer past couple seasons, and he's really good at surviving. But uh, took the early walk. But then the Tauntauns, they attack, and they lose bodies as well, too. Two bodies coming off right now for the Tauntauns. Archie picks a gun. Oh, wow. The ref is pulling Columbo. So Uncharacteristic death as well. It's a two-on-one. Tauntauns lose two. One, uh, did one get a minor there? Because that's what I needed to know. I didn't see if it was a penalty. Yeah. Well, and Greens then Archie picks a gunfight and loses well, it. Well, Greenspan had also walked off, too. We might have a one-on-one -on -one situation. One-on-two, right one-on-two. One on two. Where's the second body for... Uh, now in the 50 Dorito. Okay, one-on-two in favor of Tauntauns. So it was just Marcelo Margot, another guy that can pull off low-body magic, but not able to do it. Yeah, that point did devolve into a little bit of chaos oh. there. How hard is it to keep the count out here? Oh, man, it is brutal, especially if you are not in this snake side can looking heads up and guys go off real low and just circle into the box of what looks like other players all clustered. When, and also depending on, because if you're starting at the same part where your hit is, it's easy to dip off on scene. Oh, yeah, yes. Absolutely. Yeah, so it just, at World Cup, I've always noticed, because typically if you're just joining us and haven't been watching the rest of the year, the pits are normally on the sideline. And at Cup, because we have to have uh, stands that run the entire length and a VIP area that runs the entire length, they put the pits on the back side. It just makes it harder to keep the uh, kill count out there. I personally yeah. would love for the pits, the um, leaving the field, to be back centers. And so you actually have to know you killed someone, not just get to watch people walk off the field. Well, let's listen in here to the Tauntaun pits. Can you uh, translate, Maddie? Yeah, I do not speak French. I'm sorry. You've been a lot of traveling. You've picked up any French over the years? Uh, petite. <laughs> <laughs> Just a little. Well, I've also heard that the Tauntauns have a, you know, they have an interesting way of coming up with game plans where they don't really have, like, a ton of set plays. You know, they'll come in, kind of have a huddle, figure it out, and then go back out try to readjust. Jake's going to get pulled on the yep, late two, start. Yeah, uh, yeah, so Joe, two bodies here coming off early for Tampa Bay. So this is a good break for Houston Heat. Houston Heat still five bodies live and a good old Five on three situation Ooh. and down one. So this is uh, Houston Heat would love to get one on the board here in this high body moment. It's oh, five on one now. Yeah, two guys just lost gunfights. Really that all started with Jake trying to run in late, actually bumps into Chad. Chad gets shot trying to leave because Jake's running into him. Yep. And they pull Jake, so they lose their whole Dorito side off the break. Yeah, also that's CJ Batsalas, who's not going to be happy about that in his early match spin. <laughs> uh, oh, that's CJ, not. He is going to give Jake uh, an earful, I imagine, on, hey, man, you just messed up my run, my route. <laughs> but uh, we, we don't know what happened that caused Jake to be late on that. Probably a chrono issue or something. Well, that first point, you saw Jacob and Jason were squeegeeing the entire game. Yeah. So maybe he switched guns or something, and then, oops, I'm hot. I haven't chronoed this yet. Yep. So um, I'm not saying that's what happened, but they were squeegeeing a ton that first point. Yeah, that and, and it's uncharacteristic for do that play. That would make sense, though. It's not out of the realm of possibility. So we're in the pits right now with Houston Heat. Let's check it out. Actually, we're going to go to replay. No, we're not. So, uh, oh, no, we are. So yeah, this is the replay. Yeah, so here it is. So uh, look at this. Here it is. He missed it by one second. Oh. You know what? I guess he didn't really mess up his Dorito guy. No. Just got him off break. Then the ref makes right. like the way he was pointing at Jake. I thought he was trying to say, hey, you got my way, but maybe not. And there was the last body, last kill. Pretty easy here. Easy finish for Houston. He got a bit of a gift, though, with a tough start for Tampa Bay. Mm-hmm. So that game's going to be tied up at one, and now Dynasty brings out 
Marcelo getting shot off the break. Yeah, so they brought out another group. Well, it looks like Ryan getting another spin, Marcelo getting another spin, but Marcelo almost never, I mean, he rarely ever sits unless he's tired, and that's, he keeps himself in great shape. That doesn't really happen that much. Yep. But he does get shot off the break. And so it's a five on four situation here in favor. Ooh, now four on four as uh, Axel gonna Back lose a gunfight. Like Brian Cole, but he doesn't play paintball anymore. That is Yosh Rao doing the Brian Cole forward hat style. Oh, Pretty I cool, like Ode. Um, Arturo just got a great kill. He knew the god was heads up, shot the bounce shot right into his hopper. Nice. Takes Axel off the field, the biggest weapon Tauntauns have. Kinda evens out the playing field too. Yosh can trap this Dorito one pretty much all day in that particular gap. So no real advantage yet. Let's see if anybody knows our Toro's up there. Archie moving up out of that can, getting into the Aztec. Now they know our is there. He missed the shot. He was baiting them to match Archie on the fill, and he missed the shot. Arturo Ooh. here on your screen, up at that crucial 50-yard line, spot in the middle. Yep. Zoning up snake side. And now Archie's in the snake completely alone. He normally does not make a mistake in this. Wow, lands his first ball on that Dorito 2. Lands a ball on Dorito 1. Archie Ar threading up the field here, past the 50. Did get caught inside, though. And maybe traded, though, as the can dies at that same moment. It's not looking good right now for the Tauntauns. The Tauntauns, the uh, snake can, only player left. Yep. I don't think Yosh knows the count, because he's still just holding that Dorito gap. Uh, but regardless, the other two seem to know the situation. Yeah, so you can see here our eye in the sky, our telestration where those bodies are as this three-on-one situation and no longer as the Tauntauns, not much they could do in that situation. Dynasty going to tie it up. You know what's interesting on this particular field with Dynasty is because it's such a hef heavy pocket layout, we have Archie Monomare playing the one instead of guys like Arturo or Mike Urena. And last year he had MVP type performance playing short as the snake one. Marcelo Margot is now playing the Dorito front, and the year before, he had MVP performance as a Dorito front guy. Well, that, but that's what makes Dynasty so potent, right? Is that they have a lot of guys that are very versatile, they can play lots of different positions. So, yeah, I mean, Marcelo's been the gunfighting anchor for the most part in most of the strategies that Dynasty's bringing, but occasionally they'll throw him as the one, or sometimes, and this is what makes Marcelo so good, his first front guy will die and he has to take over the attack. He excels at that. And then same thing with Archie. When Archie's been forced to play the first attacker for whatever reason, he's done amazing at it. You know, yeah. again, elite of elite performances throwing MVPs up there. We're in the pits right now with Dynasty. And yeah, they have been. There's the goats, Oliver Lang. Hasn't really gotten, he, he did make practice and he was the finals MVP from the World Cup victory last year. Uh, but Oliver's very honest with the guys and himself about the situation. He doesn't want to be the guy that comes in, I'm Oliver Lang, I'm, I'm going to get some playing time. Yep. That's not how it works. A very selfless team player. He understands if he's not getting play, it is what it is. You know, other guys are going to have better practices. So jumping back into point number three here is this is tied up one to one, 10, 12. Here comes a big bite from Chad Bougere all the way on to Houston Heat side as Houston Heat does lose a body early. Tyler Harmon as well, big kill. Oh, but Rainey Sanzik taking the walk, and then Chad Bougere is going to get shot out. Smith was going to launch to try to uh, to get him off the field, but he died before that. He does lose Fedorov, though, on the D side. Yeah, so Fedorov goes through, shoots Chad in the back, but Keith Crossfield shoots Fedorov, shooting Chad. Off that, Ryan Smith takes the 50. Dang, these are some bangers. <laughs> yeah, it's thinking the same thing. I'm like, man, these guys are going quick. Ryan just lost a gunfight, but Chad George just snuck in a snake completely unseen. You know what's kind of funny, uh, Joe and Thomas, is that we were talking about strategy and what we're going to see out of Houston Heat and Tampa Bay, but almost you, you could kind of lull everyone into, okay, here, we're going to show you some of our game plans and play fast, but they could then go to standard Sunday paintball and not really show their real true hand. True. Right. Keith got that free kill because no one knows he's in there. Chad Sorry, George. Chad, George. Chad yeah. The Nobody no knows, one knows he's, in, he's in the snake. Chad George on to damage his side. He has to not give this up here. I think Jason kind of realized it. Yep. Ooh, so they're going to wow. do a little standoff and blast each other. And that's going to allow Keith Brown, though, to launch on a counterattack. Mishka does not know that Keith Brown has oh, made it up into his 50. Shot. He does now. Is this a one-on-one? -on -one? I think yes. it might be a one-on-one -on -one here with Mishka Keznev and Keith Brown. Yeah, Chad just gave his team a chance in that two-on-three by clocking in like that. Now we're going to see a really good gunfighting one-on-one. Both these two are elite with their snapshot. Keith Brown on the heat side. And when you're in these one-on-one -on -one situations, so Keith's going to actually cut back to the center where he has a lot of options with bunkers. Just tall enough to be able to play over the top of that brick. 
Mishka's Ooh, right around him. the same height. Wow. Keith sees the edge of his goggle right there. Mishka pushing more towards back towards his side. Keith just blasting up and over the top as he's trying to get a load in, and he does switch his left handed. Mishka also going to be left handed out of that side. Keith's going to commit. Keith read it perfectly. Again, the whole point of a one on one is try to make a move so your opponent loses you, and then you can get a, a free oh. opportunity to get that kill. Wow. Oh, so Keith Brown's going to. Nice move. There's a legend on legend battle out there on the yeah. one on ones, <laughs> and it's going to be Keith Brown taking down Mishka, who's really good in these situations. One of the origin, original first you know, uh, Russian killers to emerge as an elite superstar. But Keith Brown, man, getting it done again. <sighs> nice. Either one of those guys have won that situation so many times right. in this pro league. That That's about one of the best ones you could see. So Tampa Bay Damage is going to take a slight lead here. Dynasty and the Tauntauns both locked up one apiece as we're seeing the top four teams. So, yeah, uh, Dynasty Damage, Heat, and the Tauntauns get buys into the top eight. They're playing these games here for seed. So whoever has the uh, best record will be the one seed and then all the way down to four. This was interesting here. Um, Edwards made the move right as Chad made his move. That allowed Keith, Keith to get in there. And then they had a nice little one-on-one. -on -one. Mishka tried to come back over, make sure he protects his buzzer, and then just gets caught right there. So great job by Keith. <clears throat> yeah, so uh, going wide. So yeah, Tauntaun's wide on both sides, and looks like they both make it, and all the way onto Dynasty side, so aggressive breakout. Wow. Should have got a kill out of Alex right there. Did he miss? I think he missed the shot. Wow. Either missed he's him or bounced not. him. He's yelling at the ref, that guy's dead, but no one's going in after him. Everyone is now in so tight that Axel basically has a free crawl down the snake. He's just got to stay below the trip wire, avoid break Blake Yarber's gun. He already sees it. Yeah, so battle going down <clears throat> as really good penetration. Thomas, I believe, for the Tauntauns. He's on to Dynasty side, but no kills have been produced. Dynasty still with five bodies out there. Oh, oh they're going to be losing Alex, though. Archie's still alive. Here comes Yosh. Yosh has figured it out. Yosh is going to drop the hammer. That kill had to happen. Blake Yarber had been shot. Those three bodies have walked off for Dynasty. As Sheer scurries out to D1, try to spread it out. Archie's still alive at the can for Dynasty. Archie Ooh, puts in the god and makes a fill. Tauntaun's losing Axel. But Dynasty losing Archie at the same time. Yeah, it's so three Shear on one. shoots Axel, someone shoots Archie, now it's a three on one. So just Chris, uh, Chris Sheer into D1. For San Diego Dynasty as we get past the 10 minute mark. Tauntauns probably don't know the count or they would be making some different moves here. Yeah, Columbo's kind of playing like he's not sure where this body is in front of him. And they're going to shoot Cheer, so now no one left alive. And that's going to do it. So, yeah, maybe they These did know. points are so Everyone much more chaotic them. than I thought they were going to be. Yeah. Well, I just, because I was thinking, like I said before, I'm thinking about it. It's like, okay, let's truly, okay, you know everyone's going to watch. Like, you guys are sitting up here, okay, what are they going to be doing? Right. Could be playing these guys on Sunday. Lower, but if lower, you actually say to your guys, like, let's just play free and let's play aggressive, because we're not going to be doing that these crazy right. things. See so we can get away with now, Yeah, we need a fast Exactly. Point. You know, and then everyone's watching it. Oh, Tauntauns are going out wide. They're, they're doing this. They're doing that. And then when you go play them on Sunday, all of a sudden they go to that, what we're calling the arrowhead play. Because if you look at it from the eye in the sky, everyone, mm -hmm. you know, you take some ground in the middle, you know, both cans, back center, maybe double up back center. That's been kind of the safe standard play. We're going to see a lot of that on Sunday, most likely, mm -hmm. with a through, you know, a few maybe risks here or there, depending on the flow and the ebb of the strategy and where the guns are going. So that's actually probably pretty intelligent from these teams to just kind of let it be free out there. Just let's play some paintball. For sure. Yeah, it doesn't necessarily look like anybody's doing superstar stuff, but more guys are just going, I'm going to take the ball. And luckily, both these teams are elite at playing scramble paintball. They're yeah. very good at the, the read-react on the fly. Well, that's a good point, Joe, because you don't become a team that wins tournaments and especially wins multiple tournaments if you don't excel in the scramble because that's where every single tournament is won. Mm -hmm. Every tournament comes down to a, some crazy two-on-three and one guy steps up and gets a couple. Like, that's how every tournament's won. Correct. Or how you even get that deep in the tournament. Like, no team just goes and blows everyone out of the water and wins every game. You know, yeah. That's not how it works. Damage, five guns up off the break, shooting uh, Heat's back center and snake corner, but Heat made the 200. Yeah, so Connor, three. Connor Kelly and uh, Sam Mambo getting a spin, getting shot off the break. Yeah, five on three situation, favor of damage. They're still doubling up that back center. They're on the blue side, Heat on the red side. The saving grace of that field stretch with Ryan Moorhead is where he is looking cross, basically shuts down the entire snake side and center. So this right. kind of buys them time, and I'm not going to say it negates the five on three, but it puts them in good position. Oh, 
Dorito front player on damage, taking a walk. Looks like might be CJ Basalas again. Yeah, I think he lost the fight to Ryan Moorhead over there. Oh, Ryan. Ryan's been really good for Heat on that D side this year. Yeah. Outstanding. Having one of his better years, absolutely. Yeah. Well, Ronnie's he's a, well, off that. you know, a, a few years ago, um, maybe 2019 or 18, yeah, Heat won World Cup coming out of the wild card round back before we had the 24 teams, and Moorhead was the MVP, and they had to win four games in a row. Um, and now if you're coming just out of the 20 teams, like where you guys are at, you have to, if you want to win the cup, you have to win four games on Sunday. Yep. Jeez. Yeah, I would say, and he's always great, but this might be Ryan's best year ever. <laughs> Ronnie with from a the, sweet From the, the can. Oh, Chad saw him. Yeah, Chad Bougier going to make that move to neutralize Ronnie Dizon, who also had a really good year for Houston. He, he's got a ton of spins. Good to see Chad Bougier back. Uh, as he wasn't at the last event, he's injured. And Ryan Moorhead's going to dip into that 50-yard line here for Heat on the D side. And might be shooting Rainey Stanzik on his move across. Oh, couldn't quite get that angle. I think Rainey's good to go. Here comes Edwards. Oh. He's going to move into D1. Did he get that kill yep, on he Ryan? He did. Caught him rapping. Three on one again. And then Tyler Harmon's going to get pinched out. So. But yeah, it's getting a little um, a little fast out here in these matches. It is. They're, they're not. Uh, ne no, neither one of the top four teams are playing what we would call conservative out here. Uh, you know, I like that Ronnie went. Shoot, we're already down a body. Damage is good at the smother. I'm gonna go right into them and see if I can cause some chaos. Now, granted, Chad saw him and came and neutralized it, and now they still have the body advantage. But it's like you're probably gonna lose that body down. It, you know, situation if you're just playing pocket against them anyways. So uh, I, th I think people are just going to keep doing those moves and playing more free in both these sets and when they switch. So we got 10 seconds to go before the start of this next one as we're looking in the pits. Keith Brown working on his gun a bit. There's Agent Smith, a lot of time star for for damage and off the break right now. Egg, but he slid it off diving Ooh. into the um, three to one. We'll see if the ref comes in and gets a penalty on him. That's a bomb blown off here yeah. on the Ooh. side of the field for the Tauntauns. Good catch, Thomas. That is the minor penalty. Well, they lost two to start out with and then get the penalty. So it's just one body out on the field right now for the Tauntauns. It should be easy for Dynasty to tie this one up with 920 to go. He, uh, he chops up Ryan Greenspan. He's fighting for his life. Uh, but that does mean Dynasty shot three off the break, just so you know, yeah, right? Yeah. Because I saw the Drita player, he tried to slide it off. He got most of it off, to be fair. Um, not enough. The, not enough. The refs, the, well, the inside refs still saw. <laughs> um, uh, but, you know, that means Dynasty shot three. That's crazy. That's great break shooting. That's great break shooting. That can happen on this field. If, if your first ball is downfield, I think in the exhibition game, we had a game where we lost four bodies off the break. Yeah, we've, it's it's gotten a little bit tighter because everyone's starting to figure it out. And that's another thing, too. It, it all, the strategy always ebbs and flows, even with, uh, you know, things like the break, right? So the exhibition was a brutal situation where lots of guys were dying on the break. And then and it's been, as far as fields over the past few years, pretty brutal on the break. But people are starting to figure out better routes, safer routes, a little bit more different game plans. And so it's that who's going where and then how dialed you get on your shots. So you just get more and more dialed as the, the tournament goes. But then this you, the shots change because guys are going up the middle. You got to switch to the middle. Guys are, oh, they're going back outside wide again. I got to switch back to that shot. Mm -hmm. So heat down by two. See how they answer here. Fedorov back in, so they're going to, oh, he doesn't stretch it. Wow, Mishka takes the first ball downfield off break. He's, and that's the Dorito lock. Yeah, talking about a great off the break shot right there. Yeah, it looked like Jason shot right back home to home. Yep. Uh, and caught one of them because both teams were doubled up. Well, shoot the shooters is yeah. always a good play. And when both teams are doubled back center, if one team decides to shoot at the shooters, there's a chance for a kill then. Wow. Oh, and Chad George get caught trying to get into the insert Aztec snake side. So just down to three again here with 5.17 to go for Houston Heat. Damage looking good. When Heat seemed like they were struggling in the exhibition event too, don't get me wrong, right? Yeah, a little bit. I could pull the scores, but. At this point, Brian Smith has the entire snake side trap from ever filling. And he's making them kind of react and play off of like, you could see Yaya wants to think about how to get him. Well, Heat trying to battle out as they get Fedorov out of the can and into D1. Damage with now, the double stack double of bodies at those center 50s. 
Yeah, good read by Marky Ireland to block everything out and get up there. They could double cross at this point and nobody would ever get to them, protect each other while they're on the zones. Yeah, I think this is Brian Smith and Marky up at the 50s. Edwards is getting behind him. Here comes Keith Brown gonna dive into the snake. Unseen, no one looking. Oh, Chad's, Chad somehow saw him. Yeah, somebody picked him up because they switched the gun over there quick. He didn't touch any of the bunkers. Somebody must have saw him dive in. Maybe Federoff from D1 yelled the code across the field. But it's, as you guys well know, once a guy gets in the snake, if you don't have anyone out there to contend with him, oh. so you're playing whack-a-mole because he could pop up at a bunch of different spaces. Wow. He gets two in one line. Yep, great double kill. Penalty going to be assessed on uh, Tampa Bay, though. It's not going to matter as they still had five bodies alive when Keith shot those two. Ooh. And Jacob was attacking on the D side, so those middle bodies got pulled, but inconsequential. His damage going to go up by three now. They got a little chirpy with each other on the runoff, too. Well, let me ask you this. So the, we had the exhibition, right, 7-3 exhibition. And yeah, you're playing for money, but it's still a bit of a practice for the big purse that's at stake here for the actual World Cup. Yep. And then now you have these top four teams that are playing for seating, but really, you never know who's going to come out of that trophy and who you get picked to play, and it's going to be who wins Bruce coming through anyway. As much anymore. It, yeah. 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 But so that's my my question. So now it's like he plays a, a an exhibition that you know doesn't really mean that much. Yeah. Again, money at stake as we're watching Keith just obliterate those two bodies, and then now they're playing these games. So it's like mentally, talk to me about how hard you think it is for them. Oh, it's difficult because they struggled in the exhibition. You know, like we saw teams like Bears in New York. Um, play really well, and we saw top teams like Heat and Impact not do as well as you'd expect in the exhibition. Uh, at this point, I feel like if they were using that for practice, they're now using this to dial in sharpness. You don't even have to necessarily show new plays or dial in your pocket play, but you're going to quickly see who are your guys that are just more inconsistent than the others, losing more gunfights, rushing more moves, etc and you'll kind of already know who your starting five, maybe six, seven are going into the real tournament. Well, Archie looking real good right now here for Dynasty as he's in the snake. He's gonna get into that 50 and Tauntaun lost a couple bodies. There's no one in front of Archie. He's being careful though. Pops the top. And shoot that inside lane, back center yep. dies, D1 dies. Dynasty looking to put up a lead here. Still a decent amount of time on the clock. It's going to be conceded, and that's a great point here for Dynasty. Still, what, four bodies alive for them? Yeah, Marcelo and... Yep, they lost Ryan, basically, you know, in like that first couple seconds. If they were double back center, and then after that, they're going to lose a body. Um, how many matches do they have uh, in the exhibition matches? How many um, of these do they get? They all play each other one time. So they get three, yeah. three games? Yeah. But that's the thing. It's, you know, a lot of this, when you're at a, t a top level, like a Heat or a Damage or a Dynasty, you... You know, I mean, he doesn't win a tournament in about two years, but they've been super consistent. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, they're in the top four, even not winning an event. That's how consistent they've been. So the edge is already sharp. You don't want him taking the tear off like Chad George's been dealing with injuries. But you got to get, like you said, figure out who are my guys that are looking good. Like who is dialed right now? Yep. Like you got a big, deep roster. Only five of them can play at once. Yep. So you got to figure that out. You got to figure out what's actually working, what's not working, because they didn't get a ton of looks in the exhibition. And then now here losing pretty solidly so far by three to damage. Um, he, again, two more games to go. So, But at a certain point, you got to just really start to figure it out and dial it in. Mm -hmm. Because you know that, again, whoever makes it through out of the 20 teams to make it on a Sunday are going to be the Lions. Because, man, that's a brutal cut. And then you got to make it through just to get to play the, those top four teams. Then you got to win a game Sunday morning. Yep. So... You're going to have some uh, some brutal opponents by that time. So no, even if you are the top four and you're one of these amazing legendary teams, you, you're going to have to be as sharp as possible. Yeah, I almost feel like seeding matters a little less at this one because without those typical sneak in wild card teams, now it's like, OK, who do we want to draw? New York, Hurricanes or Russians? Damn, either way, that's a <laughs> tough first match. Like there's not necessarily a, you know. I'd rather be playing this team type situation. Yeah. Mm hmm. Well, see if Houston Heat can pick it back up here. So they're going to double up the back center. Both squads actually going heavy guns here and risking both teams risk a body out wide D side. Damages loses their body. Here comes Ryan Moorhead. He floods up, immediately dives into D3 as Smith and Harmon launch up the middle. Agent Smith gets shot for damage. 
Yeah, so Ryan Smith and Agent Smith both went at each other. Ryan had his gun up first, caught him, heads up. Well, now down three on four. Ryan Smith, when he's on, going up the center is a really, really, I mean, he's amazing. When he's on, he's real tall. He can play uh, uh, very effectively over the bricks, no problem. Yep, he just picked up Chad Bouger on that fill. Yeah, his body style, similar to Tyler Harmon's. That is, he's very effective up there. Yeah, fast, athletic, 6'2". Mm-hmm. So Houston Heat scoring a quick one here and making this a match. Going to have three minutes left. Still some work to do down by two. Really great execution of that play, too. Ronnie Dazan hits the short shot on that Dorito side can, and then they didn't let anybody fill. They shoot Chad on the fill. Like, just perfect execution, really. They didn't lose a body. And that's, if you're a Houston Heat fan, that's what you want to see. It was starting to look a little flat. Guys weren't hitting their shots, not making spots. And then they just come blow damage off the field, pretty much. Like yeah. About 35 seconds. Yeah. And Heat, you know, once again, probably the most consistent team in PayPal that they're always in finals or semis, right? But sometimes you see them win that point, but two or three of them die weird or rush it. So when you see those five alives, you're like, okay, Heat is actually firing on all cylinders. Well, and when we talk about consistency, so yeah, didn't win an event uh, this year, but a sixth, a second, a fourth, and a second. They made it to the finals twice. Mm -hmm. So, and they typically, when they're losing, taking the sixth and the fourth, they're losing to the team that wins the tournament by one point. Yep. Tontons lose two off break, by the way. Yep. They lost their back center Dorito shooter and their Dorito Kayon. So they lost their whole Dorito side, really. Well, we were talking about some fast points. I mean, there's, there's, they've scored five points out here, and there's still eight minutes left to go. Right. That is true. The pace of this game is already faster than most point we've seen played. Yeah, for sure. Tonton's losing another one as Shear gets up in there and the 50s Rio starts wrapping. Shear takes out another another. Greenspan now going to pass that 50-yard line in the middle of the field. Arturo's looking to try to get up there as well, too. And then here comes Ryan hunting for it. Ryan's going to come through and blast Axel Godin to finish things off. Uh, I am confused. Tontons has a very intelligent coach, and I'm, I'm not sure why they didn't towel that as soon as it was just Axel to save the possibility of getting a random penalty starting down the next point. Um, that they could have saved him a little bit of time in well, Axel's rib cage. Well, they're still not conceding it, so it, you know, spread not really an issue. Well, I mean, maybe, but conceding, but yeah, it's again, they, they're, and they're still not conceding it. So yeah, and if you're tied, whatever, let the time run down, play a last good point, but now you're going to be down two, and you're gonna give yourself less time yeah still a lot of time though i mean they could burn another minute off and they'll still have five and a half to go to score two which is with the way these points are going we could even see three four points in that amount uh, of time yeah. mm -hmm. way more points than i thought yeah but it does appear people are trying a lot of things stretching places you wouldn't normally stretch seeing how many times you're gonna make it i mean dynasty is clearly looking to see how often they can go wide Doritos. I mean, they're pushing it a lot right now. Like, okay, so when we need to, how far can we go? Where are we? Get, where do we do it from? Well, think about it. If you if you do get a lot of spins, a lot of points played, you you have a decent data set to figure it out. Exactly. It's like, okay, well, we played whatever you know, say 25 points in the three games if you really push it, and they made it. We made it out there 60 percent of the time you know, when we went. That would be a good number to know. Absolutely. And then same with up uh, outside wide snake side or you know full attack up the middle take some ground towel finally thrown in at the six minute mark so that was intentional they waited till they got to six minutes have you noticed the there's dog. a an average pace of points so far i'd say before this before the next but i was gonna say this is throwing it off yeah yeah um yeah i mean with when things as we see the replay there's colombo coming over getting smoked and here comes greenspan knowing the knowing the count perfectly threads up um well, it really depends on whether or not it's close or a blowout, because we've seen a decent amount of blowouts here. Mm -hmm. um, so that kind of throws off the data set. But I would say we've seen a decent amount of, God, you know, like one team. Game, yeah, I mean, it, it's we've seen a couple three twos. You guys had one against Legion. Um, Energy Elite had one against ML Kings. We saw a couple of those. Revo had one against Saints. I mean, I'd say like four or five to three, three decent amount of three twos. So okay. right around maybe five to eight or nine points. That would be the mark, like the the gap. Ooh, yep. Bodies coming off. Let him for wow. Tampa Bay. It's Houston Heat. Definitely dialed these past couple. So there's the Houston Heat that everybody knows and loves. They shot four off the break and then Chad immediately filling out. That was that was that four off break type of break shooting we talked about earlier. Uh, yeah. So it seems like if you had to average, it's like two minute point pace on this field. Which is kind of what we know as a practice, right, Thomas? It was mm -hmm. it, most points were right around that two minutes area, which is 
that was weird to me because it's such a shooter heavy field yet it doesn't play long five minute points like a lot of shooter fields do well that's because guys are you're, there's a decent amount of bounce shots so random deaths are happening um and then if we throw in some of these younger less patient teams occasionally you're going to get guys that they just either get bored or don't really realize the situation and make yeah. a move they shouldn't and get blasted because they didn't know that zone was controlled mm -hmm. And there is those zones that lock off the entire field here, whether it's the back mini W and the snake or that center door in front of the land logistics. Those both shut down the D side middle all day. And the second Dorito shuts down the cross if they're not already in the snake all day. The problem is you can't really get there easily off the break. Yeah, very popular bunkers, but you gotta work. You gotta work to get to those spots. Mm -hmm. In the pits right now with heat. Let's listen in real quick. Knowing Joey. So Sam's like, knowing Joey, that's, you got vets on the team that have played against the team for a long time. That's the input you need as a coach. So Heat feeling the momentum, and Todd getting some input from Dizon right now. Got some input from Monville. Chad is agreeing. Chad George is agreeing with the play call. Yeah. Hey, hey. But they. Okay. Yeah. I will take care of the one. Hey, guys, listen real quick. If they make Dorito one, expect the China. Hey, but also guys, okay. even if they go far, please don't. I just have some more. It is always funny when we cut to the pits because um, it's a lot of jargon. You know, so I was at the Apple, and then I was like, Godzilla, Godzilla. And if they make the Doritos, then China. You know, it's like, yep. <laughs> I don't know their coach, I have no idea what they're talking about. Uh, Tontons lose their first wide guy, and Chris Shear does the big way out wide risk all the way to the third Dorito. And makes it clean. Yeah. So, so they've run that, what, uh, what, what point are we on? I think they've run that five out of six points. He's been going out there a lot. Yeah, and then- got shot once. Yeah. So clearly they like it. Once again, if I'm SK, I'm gonna keep testing and testing and testing. Prove to me how you're gonna stop us. Because if not, we're gonna be running this up for an actual play at the tournament. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, if you if you make it five out of six times. Well, in this, if you get to the third burrito, this can becomes a non-playable one. And if you make it five out of six times, they should know you're going for it. So they're gonna try to shoot that spot. Well, and I they think that's what SK wants. Yeah. But sh show me how you're gonna kill me, because I'll, then I'll fix it. Yeah. He's a yeah. smart coach, man. Yeah, yeah, no, for sure. I mean, you know, for the re record they've had, yeah. High IQ. Yeah, I love SK. He's done such a good job with that. It's a very hard team to coach. There's a lot of alphas on Dynasty. So now Archie gonna crawl into the snake. You gotta worry about Axel, though. Axel has been at this 50-yard line snake for probably about 35, 45 seconds. Down under the five-minute mark here. Toulouse Tauntaun's down by two. As Tauntaun's gonna dig out to D1 and make it clean. Archie's still chilling at snake one, looking down the pipe here. There's that gap in the middle of the snake structures. He's got to worry about that. Gets across outside snake two. Axel just pumping paint inside. Joe, uh, they got uh, Arturo to that door here for Dynasty we were talking about. Yep. And he's overwatch. Oh, oh wow. Now. No penalty there. Huh? He misses him. Ooh. Arturo let him all the way to Archie. Wow. He should have shot him on he the way. Just murdered him. Yep. He had his gun that way too. He did. He just wasn't shooting. And honestly, he should have just been keeping that, keeping that lane honest. Just a ball in the air here and there. If Axel doesn't feel the pressure in front of him, he's coming for you. Yeah, he's one of those players. Yep. So Arturo does get into the snake though after the death of Archie. Again, he had Overwatch on him, but just wasn't able to put a ball in Axel, so Axel was able to get that trade. Smart move to get out here. Kind of on an island since Mar uh, Marcelo faded over Dorito way behind Ryan and Chris. And Chris is pretty much gonna be locked up because you can't put that center wedge in to get through that next gap. Um, as long as Columbo just stays disciplined that way, he has you until he pretty much runs out of paint. Oh, here comes Columbo with the full commit. So they're gonna pull him out. Ooh, Ryan Ar dies during oh, wow. that too. And yeah, and Green, Ryan? Greenspan did take the walk at that moment. Ryan must have got shot by the Dorito one because the center wedge can't see that Dorito. Wow. So he just took a ball. Maybe he's like spun to shoot at um, uh, the snake runner yep. and got picked up. It could have been. 
Uh, so right now, you see those uh, that, that shot from the wedge trying to contain over there on the D side. They have outside uh, or D1 as well, too, for the Tauntauns, but no one over here on the snake side. Uh, but everyone everyone that's alive is on the D side right now for both squads. Yeah, it's a two on two. Before that center guy switched, I would have liked Marcelo to oh, recognize still there. that he could have filled back. Oh, wow. Great what move. a shot. He made Marcelo <gasps> flinch, goes in. Oh, Marcelo. One on one. On the wire. Marcelo lands the ball down the wire. Wow. So it was a one on two, but our Marcelo picks up that first kill. That's ideal. When you're in a one on two, you hope you can win that first gunfight and yeah. pull it to a one on one. You're begging for someone to gunfight. <laughs> please, 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 gunfight. Please, gunfight. Please, gunfight. Please. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. The proper way to play a uh, when you're the two is you're only moving when you're not being shot at. So now a one on, good old classic one on one, but this is really good for Marcelo and Dynasty because uh, Marcelo is a hyper intelligent player. I mean, he literally wrote a book called Painful IQ and he's been so consistent in these moments. Ooh, does he pick him up? This Tauntaun guy also knows he kind of has to push the tempo and win because he's down. That's two. what I was just going to say because for Marcelo, is there. Oh, wow. and Marcelo wins the gunfight. Nice Perfect. job, Marcelo Margot. Burnt a little bit on the clock. Not much, though, because Tauntauns, like you said, Joe, knew he had to push the issue. He's down by two. And if he loses that gunfight, you're going to go down by three with not a lot of time left. Um, but Tauntaun's still not conceding the point. So they're just going to let this burn off. <sighs> Yeah, I'm not sure why. I, I guess they're kind of just giving up on the match. I think they do. Yeah, they're okay. just not really. Again, we, we just talked about how. Okay, Nothing yes, they're the playing for Nothing seeding, but yeah. it doesn't really mean anything, right? You and know, you because don't, you don't know who you're going to play anyway. True. And do you really want to show people your fast point, like how you come back in 30 seconds? So yeah, I, they're just going to let it tick all the way off. And Dynasty's fine with taking the uh, what will be a three-point victory when Marcelo hits this buzzer in probably a minute and eight seconds. Yep. He, he played that very smart because where he had him, he knows that you can only have that one move to the tower. If you went out either way, he sees you, right? So he just had to know, you're going to come to this flat edge tower. I'm going to win this gunfight. I mean, all the French guys, similar to the Russians, they do a lot of drilling. They're also known to be outstanding gunfighters, but he now has one option. Well, let's take a look here at this replay. So Axel launches, and you can tell right here, Arturo's looking at him from that lay down door. Ooh, did he get him though? No. Arturo shoots the bunker. Shoots the bunker. And then he trades with Archie. So Oh, I see now why he was complaining. Because he shot him early and Archie shot him all the way to the ground. I mean, it's bang bang. The refs are calling it. Yeah, so and here's the run th from Colombo. He comes down that cut and then gets the drop in on him. Look at the balls tried to come. Did you see anything off of Colombo though? I didn't see anything until I, I think, think he just called out did. anyways to be safe. Thinking, you know, I'm not gonna oh. test it with a bounce. I, mean, I was hoping I could see where where Ryan dies at this, but yeah. So as that chaos is happening, Greenspan catches one. So you just saw him walk off right there. Okay, they're gonna show. And then look it. at this. So this is a one-on-two situation, and Marcelo is leaning out down low, and that player had no idea that he was. Oh no! So that was the okay. That was that, that uh, first was, kill. Oh, he mm -hmm. didn't even gunfight him. The dude just ran into his gun. Oh, so he must. He, he didn't know that Marcelo was in that spot. Yeah, obviously. Yeah, there's no way. Dude, he then, was like standing on the outside of his bunker, like. Please shoot me. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And then, uh, and then Marcelo in this to complete the one on two. Yeah. Still good heads up job by Marcelo, making sure that he you know chose two two individuals. He always lands the clutch shots. He knew he had to hit those shots instantly on that Dorito guy, or, or it would have been rough. Yeah. And he just puts two in the air, smokes him. Marcelo's Mr. Clutch. He almost never comes off the field on a team full of stars in this legendary run they've had for the past three years. And then now Houston Heat. Signs of life from them, man. The past couple have been awesome. This Tampa Bay just can't contain the aggression of Houston Heat. Yeah, I mean, last time, what, they shot three off the break, one real quick, and then they got the last. Damage this time, though, five alive. Yeah, five alive for both squads here on the breakout. Heat double up that back center, and here comes Smith again. Smith's been relentless up the middle. Oh, did he get clipped, though? It looks like Connor Kelly going to take the walk. Oh. Might have been a bounce shot. At this oh, point, damage really could just sit and do nothing. Uh, they let Tyler out. That makes it a little harder, but they don't really have to do much. That risk of getting Keith out wide to the god was a great play because all the internal shooting was so tough from Heat. It kind of made it a little bit uh, more free to get wide spots. Tyler pushing through two guns gets himself to the god. Good for him. Ryan Smith, though, getting shot out of the back center. Or, uh, I mean, sorry, out of the wedge. center wedge. Here comes Keith now, not feeling any pressure. He's going to get right to the 50 and wrap around, try to pick up Tyler Harmon. As Tyler Harmon dives in, he does. Keith Brown just launches. He's going to get one. Does he get two? He, he does. does get Ryan Moorhead. And we're going to see a concession here from Houston Heat as it was just. I don't think Heat should have conceded that. Tyler ran across, shot Rainey on the run. 
and while it was going down, Ronnie shot uh, Jason. Jason. He did it was hit only Jason. a two-on-one. I just don't think he saw all the bodies dying over here. Like that was that was a grenade everywhere. Yeah, he was in a two-on-one. Well, had an opportunity there. Well, opposite pits. Yeah, opposite pits. But uh, as far as watching where the bodies were dying, I mean, Heat's going back there, so Todd's there, and he could see who's dying, but he probably didn't necessarily know who was alive. Yeah, who was alive. Yeah, yeah, that was a great job. Ronnie did the good roll-off. Shoots Keith, comes right back, shoots Jason. Tyler just shot Rainey. It, th they were in it still. They, yeah, it was close. Yeah. Now I, I did. Yeah, and it's tough though because I mean, you guys have in these pits. You know how hard it is to see coast to coast. Right. And that's another thing too. We talked about the keeping the count uh, in those situations and how hard that is depending on what side you're on. It could be easy if they're walking past you, and really hard if they're on their side. But also, just and this is, could play an issue too, is when to concede because it's hard to get eyes on exactly what's happening like we're up here 20 feet in the air and we get the whole visual with all the camera angles yep. and you got to figure that out locked that, out by all the bunkers to add to that matt heat's already down and i bet todd's mindset is if this draws out for 45 seconds or another minute we're never going to score two points so like let's just call, stop guys we have two points to score yeah yeah over yeah. letting it run out Oh, now we have two ports to score. You know, like yeah. so. I mean, it's still not a bad call. And Heat's been good. Uh, uh, I mean, not just now, but on historically on the offense. Yep. I mean, they're notorious for stealing wins at the very end. Yep. Um, when they're down a couple, I, I, it feels like them and Russians, and you could say Dynasty are the very best at those. Hey, it's not over till it's over. There's still two minutes. Impacts had a few past couple or a few years ago some mm -hmm. historic comebacks. But I do like that call either way because even if he knows it's two on one it's chad and jacob edwards who's already a tough one on one yeah and they talk well with each other <sighs> probability's low yeah right. they may never leave their bunkers be like okay cool there's one left <laughs> i don't care do you care no i don't care either we're winning yeah uh, yeah jacob edwards is a one-on-one -on -one legend absolutely so tampa bay damage houston heat down by two see heat gonna launch on the staggered attack here in a bit with a minute and 40 needing two to tie yeah, they do not produce a kill off the break, though, so that's Federal, not voting well for the chances. Fedorov gets bounced on the way out. Oh, Keith makes it in, then picks a gunfight with Tyler. Ooh, they bounce Edwards in the back center, too. Wow. Here comes Tyler, streaking up the middle of the field, past the 50-yard line, and here comes the rest of his boys Chad launching on the attack. Alone. Yeah, they lose Fedorov, and they're going to lose Tyler, and they're going to lose Boucher. So it's not looking good here for Houston Heat. Two bodies alive, try to make something happen. In a minute and seven seconds, Connor Kelly's going to launch. They also have, can't see who that is at the 50 for him. Joe, you got better eyes on heats from that. Ronnie Dazon is in the center. Dazon, okay. Yep. Connor Kelly and Ronnie's dead now. Yeah, this one's no, down. Just Connor Kelly. Yep. Four on one. No need to towel it. You're down by two. Go on to play another exhibition match. Wow. And this will be done. So Tampa Bay Damage uses the snake side can as its containment, and the Dorito side home is shooting the D-way. Jason basically just wheel and dealed that whole point on his side and over the top at the other guys coming into the center. That he was basically nonstop locked in at least two different gunfights. He, he got bounced earlier, so living on the edge. Mm -hmm. uh, that was more towards the beginning of the game. But, you know, man, Jacob Edwards, sorry, Jason Edwards. Jacob Edwards is the one on one sensation in offensive phenom, but Jason Edwards is a brick wall, man. <laughs> like, it's so hard to push into him. Absolutely. I mean, he had, it was uh, Texas last year. I think he won like a, or he didn't, they, it was a no point. Um, but I think he took, he was in a one on four, yep. and it was just kill, kill, just the same thing, just re relentless, reckless, had to be it, living on the edge. And sometimes yep. you have to do that. You know, you, you, everyone's been in that situation, played long enough. Uh, you know, Joe, you've stopped a lot of attacks in your day. Yep. Well, I played with those guys, and I can tell you, I, I would try to emulate Jason for the defense stuff because that guy will ride. Like, he does not go in, and he just never stops shooting and loading, shooting and loading. And man, that's hard to deal with. So I believe that's going to do it here yep. for this set as uh, Tampa Bay Damage and Dynasty getting the win in our top four matches. Next up is going to be Hurricanes taking on Burst and Impact taking on Joy Division. Here at the 2023 NXL World Cup, Thomas Taylor and Joe Barrett from Impact, thank you so much for your time. Best of luck here this weekend. We're going to be right back. Stick with us.